Welcome back to the Daily Grind, everyone. So this bed has cabbage and lettuce and peas in it, and it's grown really well. But it is time to do a few things. I've got to thin out the cabbage again, and I've got to put more twine up on my floor to weave here for the peas. They're all growing so well. Um, and by the way, the spray that I did really worked. I'm not seeing any new holes from the cabbage looper, so that worked. Now I'll probably have to reapply again soon, but for now it's working well. So I might be harvesting quite a bit of lettuce today, and of course I gotta thin out the cabbage, so I'll be harvesting one cabbage. So bring it in, show you guys what I'm doing. All right, first I will show you how everything's doing. Look at how great this lettuce looks. This one is awesome. It's really formed a head on there. All these are doing pretty good. And this cabbage, if you look, it's just, it's growing into each other. I'm gonna pull this one today and then I'll have four of them. And that's really all I can fit in this bed uh, is four. So this lettuce here formed a nice head. All this is gonna, a lot of this is gonna be harvested. I'm gonna bring those down to much smaller. Look at these peas. I mean, they're just growing way up and above. I've already got, I've already got three rows of this that has grown up and I mean, really high that's growing tall this is finally i've added one more on this since the last time i did a video and um we'll probably add another row to these those sugar snap peas aren't growing as fast um as the snow peas maybe that's just the variety it's a little slower growing i'm not sure i do believe though i think that this is a quicker harvest so i'm not sure what that's about the other thing i'm going to do today is i'm going to fertilize this with some phosphorus and potassium fertilizer i want to kind of kick start these to to start producing that's because this bed has only had nitrogen rich fertilizer and i want to trick these peas into starting to produce peas for me rather than just vegetation vegetation's good i want it to grow up nice and strong but now i want it to focus on producing fruit which is the peas and that's how i'm going to do that is to give it a phosphorus and potassium rich fertilizer lower the amount of the nitrogen of course down here on the lettuces i don't want to do that i still want nitrogen because i don't want them to bolt uh, we're harvesting them for their leafy greens so so first let's remove this cabbage so i'm just going to come in with a knife and just put it at the base push there we go i removed it and brush off some of that dirt but we'll have to of course rinse that off inside i'm gonna make sure there's no nasty looking pests or bugs in there before i bring it in and you can see in the crevices, there's a little bit of dirt, but you just wash that off inside. Now, if you look, I'm gonna come around on this other side, it's easier to see. I'm not seeing much in the way of these bug holes. I am on these older leaves and this is what I sprayed. But if you look on the inside here, there is just nothing new, uh, no new holes. So that means that kind of took care of it. Of course, we'll, we'll be pulling these leaves off giving those to the chickens, and then we'll have a nice head inside once those grow up big. But that opened that up and allow those two now to grow without a lot of confinement. Next, I'm gonna start harvesting some of this lettuce. It's looking really good. Now this is, I harvest that as a leaf lettuce, not a head lettuce, at least for now. Once I'm done with these plants, I will harvest as a whole head, but we will get, you know, just the, the leaves for now, use them in salads. And we'll get all the larger leaves and we'll leave, remove any that look funky. And right here, I'm gonna get rid of this weed. All right, so we'll bring it down to almost nothing here and it'll grow right back. I mean, I harvest this already quite often. Um, in just two or three days, it'll be back to the size that it was before I harvested. So stuff grows really well. Really like this variety, it's called Merrillville. It is probably my favorite of all the lettuces that I'm growing in the winter and it grows better in the winter. For now, I really like romaine. Romaine doesn't really seem to. So look at all that just from three plants. I haven't gotten to the bigger ones. So those were smaller. We'll get a lot more here with these.
let's get some of these over here. Now this one's, I think, called the Grand Rapids. Yep. And this also has a really good flavor. It's ruffly, if that's kind of what you want. It makes a really good salad, though. So that's all the lettuce in this bed and just a couple plants. I mean, it's enough for two days worth of salad. I mean, if you got a big family one day, but even so, you can grow pretty much all your salad. I don't buy salad anymore. It's so easy to grow this stuff. And we eat almost a salad every day and we don't buy any salad from the grocery store. All right, let's add another trellis here. I'll do this on video so you guys can see what I'm doing. I know I've done it before, so I Take a little bit longer of a tag end here. I wrap around three times. And then I just do half hitch, another half hitch. Make sure that's tight, put our finger on it. There we go. And then give yourself some room, toss it over to the other side, and then make sure you're on the same spot so i had counted earlier as two up on that one so we're just going to take this whole thing and wrap it around three times two three so that's the third all right and then we're going to give ourselves some extra room and now once it's wrapped three times kind of holds itself we'll do a fourth just to make sure but that'll hold itself. It's nice and taut. And I let go, you can see that stays taut. So if I let go, there's slack now. That's staying taut, at least for a minute. That'll give me enough time to get over to the other side. And we will stretch this tight. And we're going to give ourselves quite a bit of room here because we've got to make some knots and wrap around a couple times. So there, that should be enough. Cut that off. And now we're just gonna wrap around two or three times. So I was bringing these closer together because for the tomatoes I do. I want them like that for the tomatoes, but for this, I do not. Um, I realized I was bringing them all closer. You can see they're tied in closer together. I do not want to do that. So I'm just going to tie off to one side. We'll do a half hitch, get that nice and tight. And we're going to do three half hitches here. And these are peas, so it doesn't have to be super taut. They're not gonna weigh it down too much. I mean, this is a little loose already. They're not gonna weigh it down too much. All right, so, oh, cut off that excess there. And you can kinda, any of these that are kinda not really figuring it out, going off too far to one side or the other, you can kinda assist. And the wind blows them out, you know, if they don't find right away, but you can just kind of bring these and fold them back in underneath and then they'll find their way through. And of course, any of them that go into these peas, you want to want to bring in so they don't kind of merge together here. And when I had first planted these, I was confused. I was like, why are you, do you plant them so close together yet you have large row spacing. So I figured that out. It's because they grow right into each other. Um, it's okay that they're close together on one row because it becomes all one row and you're picking the peas. They can be, you know, real close. But when you've got two rows that are close, they grow into each other like I'm having here. You can see this. It, it becomes more in maintenance, if that makes sense. Get that tucked up underneath. So you live and you learn. I'm new to all this gardening gu stuff, guys. I mean, not really fully new to gardening, but new to this extent. A lot of varieties I've never planted before. I'm trying. 
now that I have a property to do it. Before it was all mostly container gardening because I was in apartments. And so, anyway, let's bring some of these over. Make sure they're kind of starting to try to grow this direction. Once those tendrils find something to grab onto, they'll kind of wrap themselves around and then grow that way. All right, now we got another one up. We can just kind of do this all the way up as, as they start growing and needing it. And some of these, some of these can't reach yet, but they will in a day. They're pretty simple to harvest. You just pull on them. That one's got holes in it. You just kind of bend them and they, they pop right off. So I'm gonna leave all that to continue growing. And I'll probably get one more harvest before I wipe this bed out. Go ahead and get the other ones. All right, so we got pretty decent harvest with those. I'll feed this to the chickens here and we'll let this continue to grow for a little bit longer. We'll get another big harvest like this. I mean, medium harvest, I guess, but another harvest from it. It's looking pretty good. Now it's time to fertilize. So what I'm using today is this Mora Bloom. It's a 0 10, 10 which means zero nitrogen, 10 phosphorus, and 10 potassium. Zero nitrogen kind of makes this perfect. It's got all the other stuff that I want. I'm gonna add a fair amount, but not, not too much. I mean, it was a nitrogen rich area already for the leafy green growth. And this is a one and a half gallon. So I add a little extra than what it calls for because it calls for a certain amount per gallon. So I add a little bit more. I don't make this exact guys. I'm not like super scientific about it. I just kind of add, add fertilizer as I see needed. And I try not to do too much. I don't want to burn the plants, but I give averages, kind of guesses on the amount. It seems to be working fine for me, so. All right, let's get these peas to start producing peas here. I'm just gonna put it right in the center. Of course, I'm not gonna use this whole thing, okay? Because they don't need all that. But I do have some other plants I wanna give fertilizer to, so. Another one that does not like a lot of nitrogen is gonna be carrots and beets. These are my root veggies, so I'm just going to finish this off on my root veggie bed here. And these are pretty close to harvest, guys. I mean, I, I've got maybe another three weeks until I harvest a lot of these. They're growing really well. Now I talked about that I, you eat salads every day. I do have other areas with salads. By the way, that's bolting on me. So the rest are not. It's funny how that one single one is, but I do harvest salad from here. And then I've got more, you know, more lettuce here that I harvest salad from. So it's not only that bed, but one bed like that with 13 I've got here. I got 13 lettuces here. This is enough probably for a family of four to eat lettuce at least every other day, as long as you're not eating giant bowls of salad. I mean, it produces quite a bit in a short amount of time. So bed like this in the winter, doing salads, doing, you know, leafy greens, and then in the summer doing like tomatoes or squash or something can really produce a fair amount of food. And then you get quite a few of them like I've got, and you can almost substitute most things that you get at the grocery store with this. Of course, you still got to buy flour if you're going to bake bread and make bread or stuff like that, but a lot of your veggies can be harvested if you time it right and do it right from a couple beds. And I've got two more here, of course, just from six like this in your backyard. You can almost completely take care of your grocery bills. Even if you just add a couple potted plants like this, I've got more salad here. It's the same variety as this. And uh, I mean, you just, I, sometimes I, I can't harvest it all. Um, I, I have too much, right? So. Uh, just time it right, put the right varieties in. We've already harvested a couple strawberries from our strawberry bush here, or the tower. 
I've got one starting there and it's tiny, so I don't know what's going on with that one. I probably add, need to add a little bit of this more bloom to the strawberries to get them to kickstart the blooming. I'll probably do that tomorrow or something. And look at this. There's a cabbage looper. Now I didn't spray this right here. I did over there. I found one here. So might need to start spraying over here. We'll get this fed to the chickens along with these leafy greens. Put that cabbage looper right on there. He'll think that he dodged a bullet. He'll end up in the belly of my chickens. There we go, guys. Eat away. So today is March 11th. You can see how tall these are. They've gotten up one, two, three rows of trellis. So when I bring you guys back, you'll see, I mean, they'll be much higher. And hopefully by the time I bring you guys back to, to look at this, uh, we'll be harvesting some peas or at least they'll be starting to grow peas. And then of course, you can keep track of how fast this lettuce grows. I mean, I'll bring you guys back when I fully wipe them out because this is going to turn into a tomato bed. Uh, uh, Pretty soon, once once all this is harvested, I'll be putting up tomatoes here. Like I said, it's March 11th, so we can keep track and watch how fast these peas start producing peas. Uh, after I gave them the fertilizer, I think that's going to kickstart them and get them get them growing peas instead of green leafy growth. We'll see how quick that is. I'll bring you guys back once I start seeing peas. Well, thanks for watching everyone. If you guys like this kind of content, please subscribe and hit that bell notification for future video updates. Also, if you could hit the like button, it would really help me and the channel out. And I will see you on the next video. Now you guys try to escape the daily grind.